Crafters, this is Jen from JenScrapbookNook.com. I'm working on a double page scrapbook layout today and I thought I would just go ahead and videotape the process. I love to look around on YouTube and blog hop and see how others approach their pages and lately I've had a hard time finding double page scrapbook layouts. I'm seeing lots of things for cards and single page layouts and I thought in order to receive you have to give so I just thought I'd go ahead and videotape this layout. There's nothing particularly special about it. Pretty much typical for me is lots of pictures on my layouts, a little bit of memorabilia, some journaling, and you know this is just the pictures that I'm using for this layout are from a baseball game that my family went to last summer. We try and go to a few each year. And I don't want to go on and on for an eight page spread for one baseball game, but I don't keep a separate photo album for my scrapbook, so I still want to get a lot of the photos into the layout. And one of the ways that I do that is by using a photo collage and I've started to use more of these. You don't need Photoshop or any kind of fancy photo editing software. You can simply upload your photos to one of the online print services. I've used um, KodakGallery.com for this particular one. Once you upload your photos you can just drag and drop them into a pre-designed template. And if you notice there are black separators between the photos so what I plan to do is just map this entire 8 by 10 collage with black cardstock and then once it's under the page protector you'll never be able to tell that those aren't individually matted photos. And I printed in a larger size my favorite picture from that night and I thought I could put the collage on the right side, this picture on the left side also matted in black and that would leave me a little space for my journaling. I also have the tickets from the game, which I want to include because I think it's neat to see what the prices were and where our seats were. And I don't know if you can tell from these pictures, but we had front row seats right behind the dugout, which were great. And since it's the St. Louis Cardinals, which are birds, the title I'm going to use for my page is Bird's Eye View. So not quite sure how I'm going to work it in yet, but I'll figure that out as I go. And then I also have an extra picture of the scoreboard that I want to work into the layout somewhere. So other things that I plan to use, um, this die cut shape, which I bought a while ago and I just thought it was interesting and had to have it. I'm not really a fan of the title, but the way I have the page layout set up, I think this should be covered up. Um, but I really liked it. And if you know, I don't know if you can tell on video, but the ledger lines are kind of a chocolate brown. And remember, the collage and my photos are going to be matted in black. And so I'm kind of debating what I want to do with the background. This is, um, and this is from Pink Paisley from the Old School Collection, and this is one of the corresponding papers, and I just love this plaid. Um, I, we go to St. Louis Cardinals baseball games all the time, so my traditional red and navy blue pages are all starting to look alike. So I wanted to use something a little bit different here. And I know that this shape has nothing to do with baseball, but I thought it was interesting and I liked the red, so I'm going to go with it. Um, the next thing that I found, let me set this aside for a minute, because I wanted to tie in black somehow, was this background paper from Basic Gray. It's their Basics collection and it's kind of a dark craft color with black circles. And I thought that that went well and it would kind of pull out the brown and then also tie in the black. So, you know, I'm thinking something like this. But then that looked a little drab and boring to me and I wanted to break up the layout somehow and perhaps pull in another color. There's lots of blues and greens in my pictures including this one kind of aqua cotton candy that my son's eating. And that same color, that bluish green color, is in the ledger paper. So I actually went in my stash to try and find something that would coordinate, and I started with cardstock that seemed to just really take over on the page. It was just too bold and too bright. So then what I did is went started to go through my pattern paper stash, and the first place I looked was in Pink Paisley. And that's something that I do often. I'll go to the same manufacturer because... Frequently, you'll see similar colors pulled in through different collections. And sometimes it's intentional, and other times I think it's just maybe that designer likes a particular color palette or certain colors, and you may see them repeat. So this paper is actually a pink paisley paper, but from one of their older collections called Fascinating. But what was interesting, if you look at the old school papers, this color ties in pretty well. It's got a little more blue in it than the bluish green in the plaid, but I mean it, it's a pretty good match and I think 
that it will tie fine. So setting the plaid aside, what I initially thought is I could do something like this for a belly band just to kind of pull in another color to give my page a bit of a foundation to break it up. And that way this is still kind of a neutral color so it's not too overpowering and chances are it's going to get covered up a little bit. Anyway, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to work tickets in or if I'm going to put the scoreboard up here. Another option is to trim this photo a little and make it fit here and then I'm not sure where I'll put my journaling. So jury's still out on what I'm going to do with that. But I was debating, I can't, I can't decide if I like this enough or if I wanted to work in this plaid paper because I just, for some reason, this just appeals to me even though it's really not Cardinals colors and it's a little bit bright. And if I decided to use this instead of the craft, it seemed that my die cut was kind of lost in there. So I'm thinking now what I may do is stick with the craft basic paper on the top half leave the belly band on, and then perhaps the plaid paper just on the bottom half. So it would look something more like, and let's see if I can shimmy this under. Ah, my pages are moving. So maybe something like that. Hard to tell before I cut it up, so I'll have to trim that piece of paper and try. So you'll see, you can see how I'm going to cover up that title. Um, other supplies that I plan to use on this page are some chalk. I found um, in my Quick Coats, Quick Quotes Powder Puff ink pad collection a color called Tahiti and a color called Amaretto. I use Amaretto all the time, and I love these ink pads. They work like the cat's eyes chalks, but they're a larger pad with little crevices so you can get in all the nooks and crannies. And They come in a box. Um, it's like less than $30. You get several colors, and you can find these at Scrap Mart scrap-mart.com. Um, but what I plan to do is ink the edges, and this might be a little bright, so I'll do it first with the Tahiti, and then maybe go over it with the Amaretto just to tone it down a little, because I just want to have more of a defined edge on my die-cut shape. So I'm going to go ahead and get my photos matted and start inking and chalking, and then I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so I've cut up my pieces, and I've inked everything on the edges and this is where I think I am. I think I'm going to use the craft basics paper as the background, putting the plaid at the bottom and I'll adhere this down. And then I trimmed this to four and a half inches so it wasn't so substantial. And I don't think I'm going to put anything in between these two layers like a border. Sometimes I'll put a border strip. I've just inked the edges and a lot of it's going to be covered up too, so I don't think I need any extra detail there. I also trimmed my die cut. The idea is it's going to go about like this. And I noticed my photo mat on the left side is going to be a little bit almost exactly the same size as this member's, and the off-white has the potential to stick out, so I just took a Copic marker in a light brown and colored those edges, so when my photo mat goes on top of it, if for some reason when I adhere it down a little bit sticks out, it won't be noticeable. But I think it should be covered up. So this will go over here, like so. And I decided to keep in the scoreboard, and I think I'll just overlap it a little bit. And then our tickets, I think I'll fan out something like that. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I'll figure out how to adhere those down. And whenever I put tickets on my scrapbook pages, I don't like to put too much adhesive just in case someday I want to get the tickets out and look at them. So once I get this all adhered down, I think I'm going to put my title here, Bird's Eye View, down at the bottom. And then the layout to me looks a little bit heavy over here. And so I think I might offset it with some kind of embellishment up in this corner. Um, and this ball, actually, because we were sitting so close, Albert Pulhos tossed this ball directly to my son. So maybe I'll put a little arrow or an extra little tab with um, that notation there. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that yet, but I am going to go ahead and adhere all of this down, and then I'll be back with the next step. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces put together now. I cut a title for the page on my silhouette. I used 
a font that I often use on my pages called Bar Ballpark. Um, and in order to do my journaling, I typed this up in a text box and chose a black background with white font. And you can print that out right on your regular printer and then just cut around it. And I find sometimes when I'm using a black mat, doing that is easier on the eyes than using kind of a shocking white background with black print. So you can still read it pretty well, but I added my journaling there. I think the left side looks a bit disjointed with the tickets, but I'm going to leave it as is. Sometimes when you're working with memorabilia, there's not much that you can do about it. Um, in the edges of my letters when they came out of the silhouette with Copic marker. That is so easy if you use the brush tip to get into all of the crevices and um, avoids having a little bit of a white edge showing on your letters when you cut out from pattern paper that has a white core. So the last thing I need to do to finish the layout is to figure out what embellishment I'm going to use in the upper right hand corner. I don't want anything that's too big or dramatic. I've got a lot going on on this page already, but I feel I need to balance um, out some of the weight that's over on the left hand side. So um, I'll be back in a minute and show you the completed page. Okay, so I think I have pretty much finished my page. As you can see, I added a cardinal bird embellishment right up at the top right corner. I found this on a Cricut cartridge called Winter Woodland, and I thought it kind of looked like the cardinal birds, and it was neat because his beak is pointing to the ball. And I needed to give him something to perch on so he wasn't just floating out there in space. And I decided to add a border that I die cut with a Quick Cuts um, border strip, and I decided to run that all along the spread and actually had it cover over top of the die cut shape here just to add a little more interest and to kind of pull the layout together. And that actually helped um, the problem that I was seeing on the left side where it seemed that this was a little disjointed and that one picture was kind of floating. It helped kind of ground that picture as well. So I think that my layout is complete and I'm happy with how it turned out. You know, I always nitpick and find a few little things that, you know, I wish I would have changed when I'm finished, but overall I'm happy with how this turned out. I got exactly what I wanted on the page, lots of photos, my journaling, um, the title that I came up with, the tickets for memorabilia, and sometimes I'll put these in a pocket, but I didn't want to cover up this the um, seating information and I decided just to fan them out with a little bit of adhesive. So I think the cardinal embellishment was the perfect touch. I like the border that I added that I didn't plan on doing from the beginning, and Overall, I'm happy with how it turned out, so I'm hopeful that you guys enjoyed this video. I'll try and do more, and I would love to see your videos and double-page scrapbook projects as well. So I'll put a photo up and this video on my blog, jenscrapbooknook.com. Go ahead and leave a comment with a link to your blog if you end up putting projects out there, videos out there, because I'd love to see them. So thanks so much for hanging out with me today, guys. I really appreciate it, and again, I'll post a close-up picture on my blog, but just wanted to kind of give you a zoom in of some of these elements now. Okay, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.